Go. <clears throat> okay, so this is the SiteOps homepage. Um, I already set up the project, so now we just need to start um, adding data to the project. So I just called the project Topo Import. So I'm just going to open my Topo Import project. Here's all the details I had already set up. They now have this modular based um, setup. So they have just the viewer, just the layout, just the grading, just the sweep path, and the topo import. I'm going to turn them all on, but you can break them up so that if you wanted just grading in the viewer, you could set that up and just pay for those now. So, But I need the topo import, so I'm going to come to my base map. I'm going to create a new revision. I'm going to call it topo import. Save. And then it launches a new window. And then once it gets going, it tells me I don't have a base map yet. So here's where I can go to their new tool, their new site tool, and import topo. So I come to site and come down to import topo. And I'm launched into another window. And then I get an interface. Um, a map interface where I can type in an address up here uh, or I can navigate around using my wheel and my mouse so I can pan over to Las Vegas and zoom in or I can type in the office address up here search Puts a pin on it and I can zoom in. That's right about where the office is. I can come up here in the corner, switch to my satellite. So now I can see, sure enough, there's the office up here. So then once I've selected, I can just come to save look or select location. And then it starts to pull it into Site Ops itself. And then I get a listing of all of the information that SiteOps is looking. So they've tied in the USGS um, and some other databases um, in areas that have more information. Um, you'll have a lot more uh, options, obviously. Back East, South Carolina does theirs every six months. So you'd have a listing here for imagery and elevation data every six months. Um, out here in this area, unfortunately, the last thing that USGS can see is topography from 1965. Uh, but there was an aerial image, a low-res um, low um, image that was shot uh, on May 10th of last year. So that's the one I want. So I want the low-res image from last year and then the only elevation data I have uh, from 1965. So I'm going to click OK. And then it slowly starts to pull in and um, convert that data to what SiteOps can understand it as. So shortly we'll see the image and the topo, and sure enough, there we go. So here I have the um, aerial image below the topography that it pulled from USGS. Um, this was before these buildings were here, so the contours run through, obviously. Um, I can fade that image in and out, so I can make it really bright, or I can fade it out. And then you'll notice that I have gray contours, which are the existing and then these red and yellow are the proposed. Right now they match because I haven't run any grading solving. Um, but as soon as I run some grading it will uh, start to reflect those changes. Can you back out and select a different topo base? Uh, once it's already been? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Like if something was added you mean? No, there was another option that was the one foot contours. Oh, uh, that was an image. Oh. That was a image with one foot accuracy. Oh, I did I thought it was one. There's only one set of topography. Okay. Um, but then you can go ahead and just come in here and I'm going to put in a couple buildings here. I'm going to turn on my ortho so I can draw right angles. So I'm going to just come in here and put in a building. Do another one over here. Do another one over here. Here. 
And then put a street drive around here where this street actually is. So I'm going to tie into that property boundary. Turn my ortho off. And oops, start that one. There it goes. Turn that off. And go ahead and delete that one. Street drive line tie in here. Come to where about this corner is. And then run it off to that property boundary. And if I turn my solver on, I see that. I could put a radius on here if I wanted to. Default radius of 30, maybe it needs to be 75. That looks a little better. Maybe I'll move it out. Something like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and just put in a parking lot around here. So if I go to parking lot area, I can go ahead and just draw some relative parking area here. And then I get the parking all generated. In there. The red dots mean the parking spots fit, but that a car probably won't be able to fit in, so maybe I'll move my corner out a little bit so that those are a little more feasible. And then I get values for each parking bay, so across the front of this building you could fit 54 spaces, but we know we don't want any spaces across the front of that building, so I'm going to come in and just simply turn off the parking <coughs> on the front of that building. So now that parking is gone. Um, down here we use parallel parking, so I can come into lines here and change my values to have that reflect some parallel parking that runs across there. You can do angled parking here if I put in a um, parking bay point. I can now start to angle that parking however I want. So maybe I have angled parking through there. Go to 3D when you can. And then I can go ahead and start to add in aisle widths and islands. But if I want to go ahead and grade this, I just come over to my grading solver, hit grade, and I get my contours, but I can turn it off so that I have boundaries and triangles. And then now I have my grading. I can turn those off and get contours. Red cut, blue fill. And then when I come back, I'm going to turn off my existing contours. And see now that my uh, proposed contours now reflect these buildings and parking spots being in there. So I can add elevation to buildings here by adding just a default height of, let's say, 35 in this case. And maybe I have this first building has a building pad depth of maybe 18 inches instead of 6. I run my grading solver again. I now see that 3D reflection. And if I turn on my cut and fill, I see that change for right now as well. So, kind of cool, cool, cool. so then just as well, once I have all that done, I can go ahead and generate a report. So I'm going to close this, and just a quick, easy report. I'm going to change some preferences real quick. So if I come to 3D view, I want something, contours, and that. Hit OK. Can come up and export PDF. I'm going to just do it to my desktop. I'm going to call it Holman's parking lot. And save. Exports out of PDF. <clears throat> and then I can come to Holman's parking lot and move it over here. And now we can see um, just a basic PDF report. 
uh, project name, what revision it was, when it was created, total number of parking spaces that this development will have is 984, total surface, impervious surface versus building surface, quick image, and then some images, uh, 3D images from uh, the four corners, so northeast, uh, northwest, and then all the way around. And then to send this report off, I just have to submit it for optimization and I should get the results in five minutes. Um, listing cost for cut and fill as well as a number of other things.